They're being called the Satanic Grammys. Over the weekend, the annual music awards show featured a performance that many are slamming as pure evil. But as everyone's talking about Satanism, they're missing the much bigger picture of what's really happening here. And that is what we are going to discover in this video. Well, if you missed the 65th annual Grammy Awards over the weekend, then you did yourself a favor, to say the least. The awards were, at first, nothing to note. I mean, they never are. It's really nothing more than a gathering of the most odious of our bougie elite narcissistically celebrating themselves. But at one point in the evening, something rather notable did happen. It involved a pop duo made up of Sam Smith, who's... A na he's now non-binary, which means he doesn't relate to any particular gender. And another contemporary artist, the German transsexual singer Kim Petras. So you got Sam Smith, who's a guy who no longer identifies with being a guy or any particular gender. And Kim Petras, who's now a girl who used to be a guy. <laughs> That's basically what we're dealing with here. And they were highlighted after winning a Grammy Award for Best Pop Duo. Um, Sam graciously wanted me to accept this award because I'm the first uh, transgender woman to win this award. <laughs> and, and I'm so... <laughs> thank you. Um, and I just want to thank um, all the incredible transgender legends before me who kicked these doors open for me so I could be here. And so, of course, you had people in the audience trying to outclap each other, right? They were standing up on their tables, virtue signaling, look at me, look at me, I'm woke, I'm woke, right? <laughs> Remember, they are narcissists. But then things got real. Sam Smith and Kim Petras performed a song called Unholy, and the performance was replete with overt satanic imagery, flames of fire. The stage, as you can see, is lit up in blood red lighting, something akin to Joe Biden's blood red speech. Jill Biden was out there in the audience and taking it all in. There were strippers. It was an utterly apocalyptic scene that depicts Satanist sentiments as liberating and freeing and, of course, fulfilling. And to top it all off, the whole satanic segment was sponsored by Pfizer. I mean, you can literally can't make this stuff up. Now, the response to all of this has been fascinating, to say the least. Elon Musk noted that the whole thing had an imploding society sense to it. He called it an end of days vibe. Senator Ted Cruz said that it was nothing less than a preview of the Democratic Convention. That was pretty, pretty inventive. Country music singer John Rich tweeted out, The Grammys looked like hell last night. If God doesn't bring judgment on America, he'll have to apologize to Sodom and Gomorrah. Needless to say, the woke left is having a hissy fit over these kinds of reactions. The ultra-woke left is over at Vice or up in arms at the Christian right who they claim are having a meltdown over the supposedly satanic Grammys. But the inconvenient truth for Vice and the woke left is it's not just the Christian right that are shaking their heads at this performance again. I don't think Elon Musk would consider himself a member of the Christian right. Do you? I mean, even Michael Jackson's niece, Taj Jackson, thought the performance was utterly absurd. They're even laughing in Australia. But the original sin in rock and roll uh, is not Satanism. The original sin in rock and roll, Andrew, is a lack of originality. And this Sam Smith character and this song, it is so unoriginal. It is so boring. And I've got to tell you, if Sam Smith did a devil deal with the devil, he, he did a pretty shonky deal because I always thought if you did the deal with the <laughs> devil, the deal was that you'd stay slim and fit and healthy and you'd be like Mick Jagger and you'd still have 22-year-old Vogue models until you're well into your hundreds. But uh, poor old Sam Smith, his deal with the devil seems to have got him a free pass to the local McDonald's for the last few years. Um, sorry, fat shaming, not allowed to say that, body shame. But I'm sorry, if you cavort 
yourself in underpants around on stage, I think it's fair that you set yourself up as a target for body shaming. Uh, the reality here is the song is boring. The video that goes with the song makes orgies look like the most dull and grotesque <laughs> and repugnant things you could possibly ever, or certainly trans orgies, which is what this is all about, it's celebrating a trans orgy uh, where you see transgender people and this is supposed to, if this is a turn on, I've got news for the trans industry, you're barking up the wrong tree. What? That, that's about as sharp of a dismissal as you could get. It reminds me of the principal in Billy Madison. What you just said is one of the most insanely idiotic things I have ever heard. At no point in your rambling, incoherent response were you even close to anything that could be considered a rational thought. Everyone in this room is now dumber for having listened to it. I award you no points, and may God have mercy on your soul. Hey gang, don't be a Billy Madison. Click on that link below and treat yourself or a loved one to a warm, soft, comfortable MyPillow product. And gang, Mike has just rolled out his MyPillow 2.0, his newest version of the iconic MyPillow. Now with a new fabric temperature regulating technology that keeps you comfortable all throughout the night. It's absolutely amazing. And you get the same amazing savings as always if you use promo code TURLY. A classic MyPillow is normally $69.98, but if you use promo code TURLY, you'll get that same classic MyPillow for just $19.98. And that applies to over 200 products in their catalog. So don't wait. Click on that link below. Get the gift of comfort and warmth to yourself and your loved ones. Support one of America's most amazing patriots and get the best savings ever when you use promo code TURLY. Click on that link below right now i mean this is ultimately what we have to get from what happened at the grammys over the weekend here's the truth no matter what they were trying to do it all fell flat whatever satanic imagery they wanted to convey it all came across as ridiculously banal boring bland and dull Everyone on that stage looked preposterous. It was utterly cringeworthy to watch, especially when realizing that these performers and choreographers and producers all thought this was a good idea. That alone says a lot more about them than anything else. Again, not to belabor the point, but this isn't the opinion solely of the Christian right. Even the liberals at the LA Times slammed the performance again as wholly unoriginal predictable, utterly dismissible. No amount of woke contortions is going to change that. No amount of gaslighting is going to change the fact that the performance was widely denounced as second rate at best and utter trash at worst. By the way, fun fact, you know where the term gaslighting comes from? It comes from a 1938 London play called Gaslight where a husband dims the gas lights in the home each night, but then tries to convince his wife she's going nuts when she notices it, right? Fun fact, but there you go. And that to me is what the desperate attempts at trying to justify this pathetic performance amount to. They're nothing more than attempts at trying to convince you that if you don't like this, you're bad, you're nuts, you're part of the kooky religious right that wants to go back to burning witches. Arr! Right, nice try. Now, I think something else is happening here. It's something akin to what biologists refer to as an evolutionary mismatch, where a developed trait that was once advantageous actually becomes maladaptive and harmful to the organism as a whole. If we think of that in social terms, the sexual and moral revolutions of the 1960s, they may have been important correctives to a social and cultural status quo that had become rigid and repressed. I'll be happy to concede that for the sake of argument. Whatever the advantages sexual and moral liberation originally brought to Western society, this weekend, I think everyone saw that liberation has become totally dysphoric. And they want nothing to do with it. Again, gang, this includes many on the political left. They looked at that performance and they were disgusted. 
And what happens in an evolutionary mismatch is the pendulum swings the other way. The social organism demands the values, in this case, the values of family and community and traditional moral norms that serve as a social immune system that protects us from antics like what we witnessed over the past weekend. That's the bigger picture of this performance. It was not just a public disaster. It was a disaster that may indeed be the wake-up call that ends this nonsense once and for all. As always, make sure to smack that bell and subscribe button. You'll definitely want to check out my latest video on Jordan Peterson's plan to destroy the World Economic Forum. You're going to absolutely love it. So make sure to click on that link, and I'll see you over there. God bless.